Dear students, today I'm going to teach you the key concepts and ideas you have to know when facing a very common pawn structure called Stonewall, which is now highlighted in the yellow color. And this really stone wall, meaning you won't be able to easily break it, in fact, it's almost unbreakable in practice. However, it has obvious weaknesses that you will be able to exploit after today's video. Let us start with the idea that white must fight for the e5 square. That's the biggest concession black gives up for having this pawn structure. This square can never be guarded by their pawns and therefore white hopes to establish a piece there which is usually a knight. The square e4 which black currently is using for their own knight it is not a long-term outpost because white can kick it away in the future by playing the pawn move to f3. In this position white could play knight f to e5 occupying the great outpost and at the same time we keep our options flexible as we still have an idea f3 in mind when we think the time is right to kick away the opponent's knight. In case black takes on e5, we are happily taking with the pawn and this pawn will provide us space advantage. It's restricting opponent's pieces and it's relatively easy to defend. Another big problem that black has is the light square bishop, which is severely restricted by its own color pawns in the center. Idea number two is about black's dark square bishop, which is vital for them to protect the weak squares around the light color pawns in the center. White often strives for the exchange of dark square bishops because that's our bad bishop by definition. Our fixed pawn in the center is on a dark color, even though it's relatively active currently and it's not like an useful piece in general. But black's dark square bishop is considered the best piece that black has on the board. A very common idea to offer such a trade would be b3 followed by bishop to a3. However, I have to mention that even bishop f4 is not unheard of. While we would be damaging our pawn structure, in reality, f4 is not a weak pawn, it's easily guardable. We have made that fantastic exchange that we almost always want in the stone wall. And now we have undisputed control over e5 square, where we'll, we'll be able to put our knight. The more common way of fighting for that exchange would be with b3 preparing the bishop to a3 move and after black for example castles we can play bishop a3 swap the bishops and now it's much easier for white to fight for the square e5 after for example knight bd7 we could move our knight to c2 from where we're preparing a maneuver knight e1 knight d3 and then knight to e5 once again remember that when black establishes the knight on e4, you could kick it away at the right moment with f3. Whereas they won't be able to kick our knight from the square e5 with their own pawns. The third idea that I would like to share is not only playing f3, but following it up with e4. That's not as common. However, it's natural to consider opening up the position with the lead in development. Currently, you could observe that the queen side development of blacks is lagging, especially the light square bishop. And so white goes f3, following it up with e4. And let's take a look at 10 or so moves to see how white won. This game was played by world champion Petrosian against Leg legendary player Viktor Korchnoi. Both players unfortunately were teenagers and so the quality might not be the world class but I think White won a very instructive game that I would like you to see. We had massive exchanges in the center after which White played f4 and illustrates the weakness on d5. Currently the bishop and in general the queen side of blacks is not playing at all, with a fantastic knight in the center with potential of going to f4. There is a pass pawn on the e5 square, bishop of ours is playing, queen is ready to go to c7, simply chocolate position for White. 
black played rook d8 to defend the pawn white follows it up with invasion to the seventh rank we have b6 by black in order to develop the light square bishop but everything is already too late white's initiative and activity of pieces allow him to even offer the sacrifice on exchange off exchange and white is completely winning dynamically for example right now if black were to take on g5 we could take on f7 and after bishop f1 and rook f1 white's pieces are 10 times better than black's we could simply follow it up with e6 and e7 and white will be winning the game so the third idea is not only playing for the e5 square not only to exchange the dark square bishops but also sometimes we could play f3 e4 and now the most important perhaps idea last but not least let's not forget about white's queen side play the great Norwegian player Hammer shows us an example of such play who started playing on the queen side with rook to b1. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, considering hiring me as your personal online chess coach, my contacts are on the right side of the screen. So the idea of rook to b1 is simply to open up the files on the queen side, push b4 and b5. Black tries to stop it temporarily with a5, but white reintroduces the idea with a3 followed by b4. Black plays knight to d7, have b4, takes takes, and here black decides to also exchange a pair of knights, after which white is threatening to play c5 followed by b5, and try to play on the queen side, generate activity on that side of the board and press some of the backward pawns that will be a result of pawn pushing in the black's position. Black stops that altogether by playing b5 himself, bishop to g5 developing with the tempo, and black offers a good exchange for white as we discussed in the previous chapters. We almost always want to exchange the dark square bishops as white, had takes and takes and once again invasion with highlighted weaknesses in the black's camp now just a matter of technique in order to win the game black has terrible bishop weaknesses there white has uh, great pieces knight is coming to e5 in the future bishop will be reactivated through the square f1 bad 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 for black rook to a4 knight to e5 we can't take because of the pin and now it's just a matter of conversion technique in order to generate the activity that we have to win material one of the pawns of blacks and then promote it into a queen perhaps to beginner side this might look equal but it's dead lost due to the weaknesses b5 e6 terrible bishop and white's active pieces so after a few more natural moves white consolidated reintroduced the bishop into the game pressed against the weaknesses in the black's position after which black had to give up one of the pawns and white transition into rook endgame which is winning uh, due to this pass pawn being very strong and the weakness on e6 and hammer won a little bit later from here hope to enjoy today's video let me know if you would like to see part two of uh, this topic where i will cover the concepts from black's point of view hope to enjoy the video if you did put a like on this video and consider leaving a comment, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.